The absolutely best way to learn about Holy Orthodoxy is to go to your local parish and to walk into a temple of God and behold the wonders of the Most High. That is absolutely the normal way to approach the Holy Orthodox Church. Uh, and to do so is to uh, open yourself up to a life-transforming interaction with the Holy Trinity. Uh, just think of the ambassadors of uh, Prince Vladimir when they went to Constantinople, uh, and they saw the worship of God, and they were simply taken uh, by the presence of God and the deep reverence uh, of the holy services. So, this is the most important way, and it can never be replaced uh, in any way by the internet. And even watching worship on the internet has nothing to do with actually standing in the temple of God, in the presence of God, and experiencing that kind of worship. The dramatic, life-changing impact of the presence of God in the divine services is expressed in St. Paul's first epistle to the Corinthians, in chapter 14, where he describes what happens when an unbeliever comes into one of our Eucharistic gatherings. He says that he'll be pierced to the heart He'll have a deep conviction and he'll fall on his face and declare that God is certainly in your midst. This has happened to thousands and thousands of Americans, uh, which is why they're Orthodox Christians today. This happened to me. Uh, this happened to my relatives. This happened to many of the people who are watching this, uh, these, these videos. So that is the way, the most important way. And it's also the most important way to find out what the Orthodox Church believes. We have a principle in the Church uh, in Latin, it's articulated by the, the Latin fathers, uh, lex credendi, lex orandi. The law of, of belief is the law of prayer. We believe what we pray, and we pray what we believe. So it's also the way to discover, the best way to discover what the Orthodox Church believes is to go to, go to the liturgy. Uh, experience Vespers, experience Orthros. Uh, go to the liturgy as much as you can and participate in it if you're allowed to do so. And that is fantastic. If, uh, how can the digital experience, how can the internet actually facilitate that and help that? Well, in many ways, in many ways. First, not every person lives near an Orthodox church. Uh, and so to be able to discover Orthodoxy when you're in the middle of North Dakota uh, and to find, no offense to our North Dakotans, but if you're in the middle of North Dakota where there aren't very many Orthodox churches, this may be your first experience uh, is, is going online. That can, the internet can teach you where to find a local Orthodox church. You can go to orthodoxyinamerica.org. You can find out references to all the local churches. You can find out who the priests are nearest you. You can find out ways to contact them. You can find out where there are gatherings and special lecture series and all sorts of things like that. I would also say that you have access on the internet to all sorts of resources that when I was young, uh, I, would have, I would have just loved to have had. To be able to go onto the internet and to find digital versions of writings of the Holy Fathers, this is just an incredible joy and an incredible gift. There are riches, patristic riches, uh, on the internet. To be able to go to solid uh, catechetical sites, um, like the one that you're watching right now, this uh, marvelous uh, Protecting Veil podcast vlog, and the Collective Wisdom Project. This is a, a fantastic way to be able to interact with priests and scholars and monks and nuns that you normally wouldn't even know, uh, let alone be able to sit at their feet and, and ask questions and receive things. Having said that, I'll give you a piece of advice that was given to me uh, by the bishop that received me into Holy Orthodoxy, and it has served me well uh, for these almost 30 years. He told me, uh, and this was before the Internet, he told me, when you, when you read about orthodoxy and you want to know more, make sure that you read material from authors that have S-T period before their names. <laughs> it was a fantastic piece of advice. The saints are uh, the, the presence of Christ on the earth. They bring the mind of Christ. The phronema of the church is, is brought to us by the saints of the church. You know, as a culture, we're very wild by glitz and glamour. And in the area of uh, the intellect, we, we take a person being smart uh, as a really wonderful thing. And there's nothing wrong with being smart. But being smart or not being smart is a gift from God. Some people are given to be smart and some aren't. And being smart says nothing about whether 
the person is holy or loving or considered serious by God. Smart people are uh, some of the most atrocious heretics in the world presently. Uh, and certainly those, there are lots of smart Orthodox PhDs running around the United States speaking for Holy Orthodoxy, uh, but they don't speak for Holy Orthodoxy. The saints speak for Holy Orthodoxy, and we need to listen to the saints. We need to be concerned about those that God and the people of God say are substantial human beings and models for us. And we need to be very careful uh, when we're on the internet uh, to ask the same question. Who's speaking to me? And is what they are saying supported by anyone who has ST period before their name? If not, question it. Red-haired boy becomes a red